children are in fitra. They have a better, they are, they're closer to Jannah than you, bro. Like, Allah, don't eat those cookies, Allah will be very angry. No, he won't. I think you should teach children Islam early. Um, but what you teach them in Islam is sensitive. Um, and I've talked about this on different occasions. I'll briefly mention this to you, my own view. You, you're free to disagree with me. Um, the stories of the prophets, most of them, like the story of Nuh alayhi salam, or the story of uh, you know Musa and Fir'aun, or the story of Sadiq and Shu'aib alayhi salam, etc., or the story of Nuh alayhi salam, a lot of those stories are not child-friendly. And the reason they're not child-friendly is because we have to understand that teacher teaches based on the student. Allah revealed these stories in the Meccan Qur'an because the people of Mecca were acting like the people of Nuh and the people of Salih and the people of Shu'aib and the people of Lut. So Allah warned them about their behavior and let them know, I have seen this behavior before in these people and you are acting like them so you might end up like them. So Allah those were the worst enemies of the Prophet that were being compared to previous worst enemies of Prophets. And what happened with them? Our children are now being given these stories that are actually originally meant in that first context. Do you understand? So kids need something else. Kids, needs, uh, kids need a message of how much Allah loves them, because He does. Kids need, kids need a message of the story of Adam alayhi salam. That's really important. That's probably the most important. If, if they know nothing else, they should just know the story of Adam alayhi salam. And they should know the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam to a good extent. You can skip the sacrifice part until later on. Because you understand that it's a child's brain. They can't process. Mm -hmm. Then they start looking at their dad funny. <laughs> right? Uh, but Adam alayhi salam's story, we, we should understand it well and we should teach it well because it's important. Um, even early on, uh, I've done two story night events on the story of Adam alayhi salam. You guys should watch it and do your own version of that for your kids. And for any people that are parents, my advice to you is learn to be theatrical. Learn to be a clown. Learn to be an actor. Learn to be a performer when you tell a story to your child. Don't tell a story in the most boring, uninteresting. Once upon a time, there was a prophet. His name was Adam. Then he ate from the tree. Yusuf had 11 brothers. His brothers put him in a well. The kid is listening, going, put me in a well, please. Just... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think that some stories of the Prophet ﷺ, and then basic manners, but no mention of punishments. Children are in fitrah. They have a better, they are, they're closer to Jannah than you, bro. Like, Allah, don't eat those cookies. Allah will be very angry. No, he won't. No, he won't. <laughs> Allah will be angry with you for telling the child that Allah will be angry for eating cookies. Because if this, this, this kid's brain isn't even fully developed yet, and you're saying Allah is going to punish you, Allah is going to get you, Allah is going to get you. And then mothers act like mothers are standing there, and behind them invisibly God is standing there. If you don't listen to me, Allah will be very angry. <laughs> Where did you get this from? <laughs> it's so self-righteous, and it's so narcissistic, actually. It's very Fir'auni. You shouldn't do it. Uh, and then... Some people do this so much, they get used to it, and women in their older age are telling their daughters, I, if you don't have my dua, Allah will never give you anything good in your life. I checked with Allah, He told me, yes. 